There will be mountains that I would have to climb. And there will be battles that I would have to fight. But victory or defeat is up to me to decide. But how can I expect to win if I never try? And I, I just can't give up now. I've come too far from where I started from. Nobody told me the road would be easy. And I don't believe God brought me this far to leave me. No, 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 no. You just can't give up now. Oh, no, you can't. You've come too far from where you started from. Nobody's saying, nobody's saying the road will be easy. And you don't believe God brought you this far to leave you. Never said there wouldn't be trials. Never said you wouldn't fall. Never said that everything would go the way you want it to go. But when you feel your back is against the wall and you feel the hope is gone, you just lift your head up to the sky and say, help me to be strong. I just can't give up now. I've come too far from where I started from. Nobody told me the road will be easy. And I don't believe God brought me this far to leave me. No, 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 no. I just can't give up now oh no i can't i've come too far from where i started from nobody's saying nobody's saying the road will be easy and i don't believe god brought me this far to leave me we just can't give up now oh no we can't we've come too far from where we started from nobody's saying nobody's saying the road will be easy and we don't believe god brothers is far to leave us you can't give up now you just can't give up now oh no you can't you've come too far from where you started from nobody's saying nobody's saying the road will be easy and you don't believe god brought you this far to leave you oh no 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 i just can't give up now oh no i can't i've come too far from where i started from nobody told me nobody told me the road will be easy and i don't believe god brought me this far to leave me nobody told me nobody told me the road will be easy and i don't believe god brought me this far to leave me yeah 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 happy sunday happy sunday welcome to your favorite program a chapter a day with princess cleeton queen of hearts and laughter <laughs> Greetings to everyone. Hope you've had a great weekend so far 
and hope this is a nice nice sunday for you it has been an exceptional one for me i've been able to do a lot more than i planned to do today so i'm really really excited thank god for strength for grace and for health welcome matt durcher welcome 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 thank you so much god bless you blessings to you as well on this beautiful sunday it's been a while hope you're doing great though it's been like a long long time thank you for coming today and our, our bible party is taken from the book of deuteronomy chapter 27 and it has 26 verses that's an averagely short read so let's go before we get on we have to hand over the session to god almighty and then we get the birthday party after which we get the bible party okay so let's pray Lord, we thank you. This is the day you've made. We rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your loving kindness. We thank you for your tender mercies. We thank you for making it possible for us to see this day. We thank you, O oh Lord, for giving us this beautiful day. We rejoice and be very, very excited in it. Lord, speak to us again in another special way through any single thing that we're going to do here on a chapter a day. Father, let your people be blessed. Let them be transformation, healing, deliverance, guidance, direction, and every good thing that these people are desiring to get from you today, O oh Lord. For that each and every one of us will be met at the point of our needs, even as the message goes out. Because you know the hearts of your people and you know exactly what each and every one of us needs. So Lord, bless us with the choices of your blessings as your word comes out today. As we've come on your table to sup with you, we pray, O oh God, that our lives will never be the same again. Increase while I decrease, so it's going to be you and you alone that will be seen, felt, and heard throughout the session of a chapter a day. In Jesus' mighty and blessed name, we pray thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. <laughs> okay, people, so let's go. Birthday party. Who's in the birthday book? Who's, who's in the birthday book? Oh, my God, Mam Zelia, your birthday was some days back. Your birthday was on the 16th. Why didn't you come to the live stream that day? I should have actually sang for you. But we could sing for you today though, you know, because you're here and it's still your month. It's still March, right? So um, let's go. Today's the 20th of March and let's see the people who were born today. But allow me to say this by Lisa Nichols. Allow my convictions to inconvenience me. We want to grow, but we want to stay like everybody else. I need to allow my convictions to inconvenience me. Sometimes the things that God tells us to do are very inconvenient and it doesn't feel like it. It doesn't look like it. So we don't want to do it. But you can get to fulfill purpose without being inconvenienced at some point. There are some points, there are some times, there are some places where you're going to be inconvenienced for your purpose to be fulfilled. Know that. Believe it because it's true. Okay, so let's go. First person on the book is Mr. Herman Carl. Mr. Herman Carl, actually, we grew up together. We stayed in the same area. And then um, we're like family, like one family. Actually, we're basically doing almost everything together. But then, you know how it goes, right? It looks like the boys grow, they just grow taller and all that. So he's kind of looking bigger than me, but it's my younger brother. He's going to be so mad I said that. Oh, yes. Boys don't believe that they're, they're young. They just feel like they're older than everybody. They just feel like even their older sisters, they're older than their older sisters. I don't know how to think of that. My dad also thinks like that too. He feels like he's older than every woman on planet Earth. Like there's no woman that's older than him. Funny set of people. Mr. Hamanka is actually a very interesting person, fun to be with. He's always looking out for the best for everybody those he cares about hmm. you can do anything to him but don't dare his family if you dare do or say something about his family he's gonna come for you like i mean like full time that's him and uh, he's a very 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 caring person uh, very jovial as well and also very hard working i know him to be that happy birthday mr herman cow and then the next person is mom lee nanji mom lee nanji is a pastor and a pastor so a pastor's wife and a pastor so happy birthday to you my past and uh, when we're in school she was very calm she was my best of best friends we went to secondary school together and like i said secrets have this thing of smiling 
Lynn was actually my college sister. What did I just say? She was my college sister. Yeah, she was my college sister. One went from one. So there's this thing about two people having one beak. Our beaks used to be in opposites, like the highest, the last of the classes in high school. And then we used to be in the first of the classes in secondary school. So went from one and then our beaks were in opposites. So uh, uh, we were both. We both had one big, so we're calling each other college sister. So this is my college sister. And she was really an amazing person. She really, like, she was taking care of me like she was bigger than me. But we're the same age and we're the same class. And uh, she, when she, when we left from secondary school, I think I left before time. I left and they went all through. And so we disconnected for a while and then I think... We kind of connected again at the university level, if I'm not mistaken. And then later on, we finally connected at our ex-student association. I'm really excited and I'm really grateful for social media because it has made me connect to a lot of people that I disconnected from some time back. Happy birthday to you, Manly Nanji. She's also very encouraging. She always supports everything that people do to the best way that she can. And of course, she encourages me when she sees me posting my videos and my messages. Okay, the next person is Mr. Asa, Isam, Asa Emmanuel. Welcome, Mr. Raymond Henry. Thank you for coming. God bless you. Happy Sunday to you. Hope you're doing great. It's been like forever. It's been a long time. Hope you're doing great. Okay, Mr. Asa Emmanuel, actually, I got to know him when I was working at the radio. So um, he started, he was part of my program. He used to be one of my listeners. And then finally, we met physically. And of course, it was really great. He was working at a shop that I knew and I used to buy stuff from there. So we became very good friends, you know, like that. He was always listening to my program, sharing it out and getting a lot more people to listen in his area. He would put the speakers up and everything and put on his radio and people would always be listening. Of course, the first time he also saw me, he thought um, he didn't believe that it was me. You know, a lot of people see me and think like, I don't know why they expect me to be super big. So when they see me, uh, he was one of those persons that saw me and was not sure that it was really me. I'm, I'm, I'm not surprised. The lot of people who actually listened to me on the radio, when they saw me physically, they didn't believe it was me. I don't know why. They just felt like I should be a big, like size wise, because for age wise, I'm big. But for size wise, I'm not big. So... A lot of people never used to believe that it was me. He too didn't believe it was me. Well, we became very good friends as well. Okay, then the next person is Mr. Elvis Nkabio. Mr. Elvis Nkabio was actually one of my bigs in the university. Um, he was in Boya. I think he was working in Boya, not in the university, but I was in the university at that time. So he was my big. I got to know him through a mutual friend. But his mom and my dad actually worked at the hospital together. So we didn't even know like that. It was later on that I got to figure out that he was, um, his mom and my dad worked at the same place. He's a very nice person, also very fun, much fun to be with. Of course, he can always activate the environment wherever you guys are. He can, he's the one who just brings life to every place. Then the next person is Mr. Dina Minet. Mr. Dina Minet is actually one of the sons of Pajaguar. This is also one of the persons who got to know me through a chapter a day on the not a chapter a day something to sing about which is a program that i was doing on the radio so they were also listening to the radio at their shop everybody was listening so a lot of people a couple of people there got to know me through the radio and then eventually pajagua invited me to the shop and when i came there no i think it's mr asa emmanuel who actually showed me all these places in the market because he started telling me that a lot and lots of people were listening to me at the market and he knows a lot of them. So he's going to show me. I think he introduced me to a couple of people. And then when I went there, everybody was happy. They were excited to see me. I was also excited to see the people that I talked to without knowing. And they, they told me how they were getting blessed, how they loved the program, you know, like that. Oh, I was feeling fly. <laughs> anyway, it's good to always get to meet your um, audience, people in your audience, and you get to know those who are listening. And it's also a lovely thing that people can put a face to the name to the person who is talking on air. So it was a good 
connection and it was really nice every time i got to meet one person who listens to my program i was super duper excited i was super duper happy age wise you know biko <laughs> mr ngechan please don't even start what are you saying do you know my age please though people get deceived by my size people are kind of giving me age my age by my size you know a lot of people some people kind of think i'm a teenager are you kidding me even my last i have three younger ones three two boys and one girl even the last one is above 20 what are you guys saying are you kidding me <laughs> please are you all should just be coming down age wise i'm big size wise i'm not i've come i've accepted the reality that size wise i'm not big even though i've fought it for like the longest time ever but nothing works so i've given up on that i'm not bothered about wanting to grow big or grow fat or grow tall or something i've accepted my fate size small that's me <laughs> okay and then the next person is mom odio lisa onigechi onigechi i also got to meet her on the mutual friends post and she has this um, business of cleaning places and stuff like that, which is very cool. I like when people are having their honest hustle and doing a work that makes a difference. Sometimes people get to, people tend to minimize people's hustle, but it's, it's, as long as it's an honest hustle, don't let anybody make you feel uncomfortable about it. I remember when I was selling peanut burger in the market, I dressed as beautiful as I'm dressed right now. And I, ho I hold my bucket on one hand. My peanut burger is there. My donut is inside. My mom was making donut and I was making peanut. I can't make peanut to sell to save my life. I can only make peanut for the I can only make donut for the house. But peanut burger, yes. But donuts? Mm -mm -mm. I don't know how to make the donuts that will cost me to get profit. I only learned how to make the one for the house. Like you, you just have to eat it. So it's so, 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 so nice. But my mom knows how to make it still very nice. And then people can, um, we can sell and make profits. So I'll dress this beautiful. And then I go out there and I'm selling my peanut burger and all that stuff. And people be saying to my mother that it's a lie. I don't have a degree. Hmm. I had two degrees and I was selling my peanut burger. Why? I was making money. There are people who have all those degrees and they don't have a dime. They don't have zero to their names. We do all these things and go to school and stuff like that to still come and end up making money. So, if my honest hustle of selling peanut burger is going to give me money, what is the force? Plus, I like talking to people. I'm a journalist. I like talking to people. I like hearing people's perspectives on life, on things, on whatever, just on various topics. So, I was having fun. I was, I just... I just made my 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 hustle beautiful. I loved my 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 I loved my hustle. I put beauty to my hustle and then just started enjoying it and I owned it. So I love the way she owns her hustle. She has a cleaning service. Um, she's in Nigeria. So um, I'm sure when she sees this, she's gonna put the link of her business in the comment section so that people can click on and go find out what she's doing and they can get to patronize her business that's how we support each other on you as well on a chapter a day mr raymond harry said amazing you can walk on your size like i can grow bigger than this really i've tried several things it didn't work so i've accepted my fate thank you anyways <laughs> and then the next person is mr olusegun lasila mr olusegun lasila as well we also met on the mutual friends post and what he was posting and the things he puts on his page are really, really helpful and they can help you grow. They can help you build yourself. So that's how I connected to him and it has been beautiful. Then the last person is Mr. Killer Ballon. Mr. Killer Ballon actually is also someone I met on social media. I can't remember exactly where we met for sure, but he has been great. Our relationship has been great. We don't talk as often as possible, but the one of few times that we get to talk is beautiful. And of course, he always goes all out encouraging me on doing what I do. Like basically almost everybody who is on my birthday book kind of have, have, have at one point in time encouraged me about what I do. It's really beautiful. Like everybody who has ever connected with me somehow have encouraged me like, 
keep doing what you're doing keep changing lives god bless you someday you're just going to um explode you know like that and all that i really really do appreciate it trust me i don't take it for granted i really appreciate it because sometimes that's what gives you the push you sit and you feel discouraged you feel like you don't want to do this anymore you feel like it's not working and then in your head you hear the sound of that voice or you or you figure out and you see that sms that that person sent to you and say princess don't give up don't back out you're doing a good work and then you're like boom you just ah you just pop like popcorn boom, you just pop out and then you start doing what you have to do so thank you all so so very much so let's go again happy birthday mr Herman Cow. happy birthday Pastor Mrs. Lynn Nanji, happy birthday, Mr. Asa Emmanuel, happy birthday, Mr. Elvis Mkabio, happy birthday, Mr. Dina Minard, happy birthday, Ma'am Odio Lisa Onigechi, Onigechi, hope I pronounced that right, please help me. Happy birthday, Mr. Olusegun Lasila, happy birthday, Mr. Kila Balon. I wish I pronounced all those names right, but if I didn't, just pardon me. Happy birthday to you regardless. So we always say this birthday prayer is not just for the people who have read their names on there. It's for every single person who was born on the 20th of March. So if you know someone who knows someone, who knows someone who knows someone, and the knowing just goes on and on and on, who was born on the 20th, you can actually send them this video so they get to claim their prayer years. Don't forget to share us out so that many more people can come on here and let's get blessed. So we're praying for the birthday people and getting ready for the Bible party. And Mr. Getchem says, with a degree, I did sell secondhand dresses. It worked for us, but the system compels us sometimes to do what we what we would otherwise not get into. Oh yeah, that's true. Sometimes it's like that. Of course, uh, imagine I had a bachelor's degree and later and had a master's degree and I still sold my peanut burger. The thing was, I was doing what I was passionate about, which I was working at the radio, I was in the media and everything, but the media was voluntary service because I needed to gain work experience. And that was the only place I could gain work experience out because it was close to my house, so I could walk and go there and everything. And then when I started doing my business, I was making my money, so I didn't bother much about having to move from that place to some other place because I loved what I was doing there. It's actually at the radio. I was volunteering as a, my daughter, Princess, wish her happy birthday. Your daughter's birthday is today. Oh my God, what's her name? What's her name? I want to wish her happy birthday personally with her name. I don't just want to say happy birthday to Mr. Getchem's daughter. I want to say happy birthday and call her name out. So what's her name? Oh, I can see the little princess on your profile. She's so cute. <laughs> when is her birthday? Is it today? If it's not today, you can still tell me the day and I'm going to put it on here. I'm going to write it in the birthday book and then I'm going to wish her happy birthday on the day. Or is it today? If it's today, let me know. I'm waiting for it in the comment section. I'm waiting for her name and her birthday. So like I said, if, if you're not sure that your name is in my birthday book, you can actually put it in the comment section or you send it to my inbox. You don't need to send me the year. You can just send only the date and the day. So like 31st July, 28th March, 19th April. Just send me only the day and the date. Okay. So um, let's know. You send your name, the name you want me to call you with on, on your birthday. And then you also send me the day. I'd write it down. Oh, her name is Princess. She's my namesake. And her birthday is today. Okay, so let me write. Princess Cham. Princess Cham. Oh, you guys, you guys have to wait. She's a princess. We have to deal with royalty right. <laughs> ah, okay. Okay, so because you're her dad and you're here today, I'm going to sing for her. And you take it and play it to her later on. Or if she's there, she's going to listen already. Happy birthday. I am saying I love you. 
I'll be with you till the end of time. I am saying well done. I am saying well done. Happy birthday, princess. I love you. I'll be with you till the end of time. I am saying well done. Happy birthday, princess. Happy birthday, princess. Happy birthday, happy birthday, princess. May God bless you all the days of your life. Give you good health, success, and prosperity. May you stand out. Happy birthday, princess. Happy birthday, princess. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, princess. I love you. God be with you till the end of time. I am saying well done. I am saying well done. Happy birthday, little princess. I pray that God is going to bless you. You're going to stand out every single day. You're going to shine brighter and brighter onto the perfect day. And whenever you are, wherever you are, People are going to notice the grace of God upon your life because you're going to shine bright like a diamond. You're going to keep shining like a star. Happy birthday, sweetie. Thank you for being a princess. It ain't easy being royalty. <laughs> My name's sake. I'm so, so touched and so happy. Happy birthday to you, darling little princess. Enjoy your day. Have a blast, darling. So let's get to pray for you all, okay? So every single person who was born today let's pray for them lord we thank you for this beautiful day this beautiful year you've added to the lives of your children but i pray that you're going to open the windows of heaven and rebuke every devourer from their lives in the mighty name of jesus cause them to shine brighter and brighter onto the perfect day let them be wall changes trailblazers and pace setters cause them to stand out they're not going to conform to the things of this world but they're going to be transformed and they'll create impact in the world Father, wherever they will be, they will be celebrated, not tolerated. Father, I pray, O oh God, that you're going to cause them to increase in wisdom and stature, gaining favor before God and before men to the glory of your name. Father, we give you all the praise, all the honor and adoration because we know that these ones are going to receive blessings unspeakable, that they will be spellbound by your goodness. Lord, that as you bless them, let this blessing encompass them as a shield round about so that no weapon formed to fashion against them shall prosper. And everyone who comes in contact with them, O oh Lord, I pray that they'll literally rub off of the blessings because there will be blessings over flow father i decree and declare that you're going to divinely connect them to people and things that will cause them to progress and divinely disconnect them from people and things that will want to bring trouble to their lives cause them to retrogress or to stagnate lord i pray that the top is going to be their portion Lord, I decree and declare, O oh God, that you're going to open doors for them that no man can shut and shut every door that no man can open that is not of you, O oh Father. I pray, O oh God, that you're going to teach them all the strategies. It's not just about getting to the top, but Lord, we pray that you're going to teach them strategies enough that will cause them to get to the top and stay permanently at the top. Thank you, Heavenly Father, because I know you're true. Perfect all that concerns them. Give them a sounds 126 state, a season of laughter, singing, dancing, and rejoicing. Lord, I pray that you're going to write beautiful stories on the pages of their lives, even as you've opened it. Father, I pray that their destiny helpers are going to be strategically positioned everywhere. East, west, north, south, front, back, center, up, and beneath. Lord, that whenever the cry for help, help is going to show up. Father, I pray that you're also going to open their eyes and enlighten their understanding to see those they are supposed to be destiny helpers to and get to be able to help these people in time. Thank you, King of Glory, because I know your prayer answering God. Lord, I pray, O oh God, whatever the lady hands on, prosper it. Wherever the tread their feet upon, give it to them as a possession. I pray, O oh God, that you're going to do amazing things in their lives that only you can. 
Give them all that it takes to be able to go and conquer their world in Jesus' name. Let money meet money in their pockets. Blessings meet blessings in their life. Favor meets favor in their lives. In the mighty name of Jesus, as you clothe them with a the garment of fa favor, blessings, and grace. Thank you, Father, because I know you've answered. We seal every prayer request with the blood of Jesus. We know it is signed, sealed, and dusted because you are prayer answering God. So we know you've done it already. Thank you for answering our prayer. In Jesus' mighty and blessed name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Let it be so. Amen. In their lives, as we've prayed, let it be so. Amen. 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 In their lives. Amen. As we have prayed. Amen. Let it be. In their lives, let it be so. Amen. 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 In their lives. Amen. As we have prayed. Amen. Let it be. In their lives. Yes, people. That's it for the birthday, people. All the best to all our birthday people in the house and those who are going to be watching this later. Welcome, Mr. Kika Carell, the man of God on fire. Thank you for coming in today. God bless you. Hope you're doing great. Hope you're having an awesome Sunday like I have had so far. My Sunday is about to end though <laughs> because this is night for me. Yeah. But my day was exceptionally beautiful. I'm so happy. I did a lot of things way beyond what I planned to do. I did today. So I'm really, really excited. I'm just ecstatic. Uh, and I'm sure you're rubbing off of that. Hope that energy is actually flowing to you. It's Deuteronomy chapter 27 and it has 26 verses. Are you ready? Ready or not? Here I come. Let's go. It's with me. Hope you all are with me. Hope you all are with me. Let's go. Deuteronomy chapter 27. And Moses with the elders of Israel commanded the people saying, Keep all the commandments which I command you this day. And it shall be on the day when ye shall pass over Jordan unto the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, that thou shalt set thee up great stones and place stir them with placers and thou shalt write upon them all the words of this law when thou art passed over that thou mayest go in unto the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee a land that floweth with milk and honey as the Lord God of thy fathers had promised thee therefore it shall be when ye be gone over Jordan that ye shall set up these stones which I command you this day in Mount Ebal and thou shalt plaster them with plaster. And there shalt thou build an altar unto the Lord thy God, an altar of stones. Thou shalt not lift up any iron tool upon them. Thou shalt build the altar of the Lord thy God of whole stones, and thou shalt offer burnt offerings thereon unto the Lord thy God. And thou shalt offer peace offering, and shalt eat there, and rejoice before the Lord thy God. And thou shalt write upon the stones all the words of this law very plainly. And Moses and the priests, the Levites, spake unto all Israel, saying, Take heed and hearken, O Israel, this day thou art become the people of the Lord thy God. Thou shalt therefore obey the voice of the Lord thy God, and do his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day. And Moses charged the people, the same day saying, These shall stand upon Mount Gerizim to bless the people. When he had come over Jordan, Simeon and Levi and Judah and Issachar and Joseph and Benjamin, and these shall stand upon Mount Abel to curse, Reuben, Gad and Asher and Zebulun, Dan and Naphtali. And the Levites shall speak and say unto all the men of Israel with a loud voice, Cursed be the man that maketh any graven or molten image an abomination unto the Lord. The work of the hands of the craftsman and put it in a secret place and all the people shall answer and say, Amen. Cursed be he that set it light by his father or his mother and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be he that removeth his neighbor's landmark and all the people shall say, 
Amen. Cursed be he that maketh the blind to wander out of the way, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be he that perverted the judgment of the stranger, fatherless, and widow, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be he that lied with his father's wife, because he uncovered his father's skirt, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be he that lied with any manner of beast, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be he that lied with his sister, the daughter of his father, or the daughter of his mother, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be he that lied with his mother in law, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be he that smited his neighbor secretly, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be he that taketh reward to slay an innocent person, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be he that confirmeth not all the words of this Lord to do them, and all the people shall say, Amen. Amen, amen, and amen. That was fast because it's just Lord's. I always say it, right? The old days when Christ had not come, things were really stringent and really strict. Like... There are people who do all these crazy things, all this craziness that has been mentioned on here. There are lots and lots of people who do them today and they get away with it. I mean, like they really do get away with it. And it feels like they keep feeling like, oh, because they're getting away with it. So they should just keep doing. And it actually broke my heart some time ago. I, I was talking to someone and then the person told me that, but you can just do it and then ask God for forgiveness. I used to think like that when I was not really, really born again, when I not really had an encounter with God. I used to think like that. I'd be like, okay, let me just do the thing. After all, I always have an opportunity to go back to God and go and say, I'm sorry, right? So let me just do this thing and then go back to God and say, sorry. But then there's also a scripture because I've not read the Bible. Then I just pick one or two scriptures and then do what I want to do because it suits it seemingly suits what I want to do, the evil I want to do. So I just pick one or two scriptures and then suit my, pacify myself, my mind, and then go ahead and do the thing. Meanwhile, there's also another scripture that says, must we keep sinning so grace may abound? Of course not. We can't be frustrating the grace of God. We can't take the grace of God for granted. You and I know that. You don't like, you not like people to take your leniency for granted. So we shouldn't take God's grace for granted. It's just like taking God's leniency for granted. God is not slack concerning his promises as some consider slackness. He's just waiting for a lot more people to come to repentance. So do you want to get in trouble because you're playing church or you're playing Christianity? You're, you're just acting Christianity? You can deceive people, but you can't deceive God. And deceiving yourself is the worst deception ever. You know you can't deceive God, right? You can actually deceive people. You can make people believe that you're a child of God. And I don't even know the reason for that because when you end up in hell, you'll be in hell alone. Or is it that some people really don't believe that there's hell and there's heaven? But if you're doing these things and still trying to, deleave, trying to deceive people or save face, it means you know there's a heaven and there's a hell. That's why you're doing some things in hiding and you're doing some things you don't want some people to see it. You don't want some people to know about it because you know that truly there is a hell and there's a heaven. I say time without number to those who care to listen. You're not going to go to hell because Christ made you to. You chose to. You chose to. And by not choosing Christ, you're automatically choosing hell. There are just two ways. There's no middle ground. The enemy makes some people comfortable in the middle ground, not knowing that being in that middle ground is automatically being in the devil's camp. So he will leave you, he will not fight you, and then you begin to feel like, oh, God is with you and all that. <laughs> the devil knows you're already in his camp, so he doesn't need to be wasting his energy on you. He has bigger fish to fry, like looking for people who are truly a terror to his kingdom. So my darling... When you're in the middle ground, when you're playing church, when you're one leg in, one leg out, you're automatically for the devil's camp. Okay. So let's go and say, and Moses commanded the people saying, keep all the commandments which I command you this, you this day. And it shall be on the day of, on the day when ye shall pass over Jordan unto the land which the Lord 
give it thee, that thou shalt set thee up great stones, and place at them where placed are. And thou shalt write upon them the words of this law, when thou art passed over, that thou mayest go in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, a land that floweth with meek and honey, as the Lord God thy father hath promised. Um, therefore it shall be, when ye have gone over Jordan, that ye shall set up these stones which I command you this day in Mount Ebal, and thou shalt place them where we'll placed her. And there shall build an altar unto the Lord thy God. Okay, so I told us that most of the times, when God does amazing things for the people, for the children of Israel, they always build him an altar. So I said, ask God what kind of altar he wants you to build every time he does something amazing for you as well. It, It's like... Um, it's like a special way to thank God. It's like, I noticed that it was a special way to thank God when it came to the children of Israel. And I think like, if we inculcate it in our lifestyle, it's going to give us a lot of amazing stuff that we never even imagined or envisage. And of course, like I said, ask God for how he wants you to do it. And ask him every single time. Because these people used to build altars with all kinds of things. And I'm sure they used to build altars as well with irons you know but this time around god said there should be an altar and this altar should be made only of stones they should not put any iron tool with them they should not use iron tools they should not put iron tools in the altar that they were going to build they should just use only stones so sometimes god gives us instructions it doesn't have to be automatic like okay so today david has to go for battle and god says go and then tomorrow he wants to go for battle. He says, oh, let me not just ask God. He's always giving me victory. So he just goes, no, he needs to ask. And when he asks, God always gives him the strategy as well for battle. So today God said we should sing and walk around the building. I walk around that nation seven times. And at the seventh time we should shout. So the next day you want to go for battle again. You just want to go and sing. No, ask God. That's what is killing Christianity today because a lot of people, and sometimes it's a personal encounter with God that gives you that instruction. And he's giving you that instruction for you as an individual. He's not giving it for everybody. So for example, I want to give this, I always use this example because it's the simplest. There's this lady, she's actually a very great evangelist. She used to be a very great evangelist. I don't know if she still is, but I think she still is. She used to be a very great evangelist. But before she became an evangelist, she was in the world and really haughty. Like, haughty, haughty, haughty. That's how she was in the world. And so she had tattoos all over her body. She had to tattoo her, like, almost her entire body. Tattooed up to her neck and everything. So when she came to Christ and she decided to become an evangelist, so she was going around and preaching the gospel. The Holy Spirit realized that people always got distracted about her tattoos, you know. So people will not focus on the message. They'll probably be asking, her, oh, you said you're a child of God. Why are you having tattoos all over your body? They don't, they don't understand that God has forgiven her and God really doesn't bother about that thing on her body. But these people bother. And because they bother, they'll be distracting her and they will not get the message. So the Holy Spirit told her that she should start putting on turtleneck clothes. That the clothes she should put on should be total neck. And then she takes that with all the zeal and everything and says that God has said all Christian women should be wearing total neck clothes. We should not. Huh? Yeah. So if you're wearing anything other than total neck, you're not doing the will of God. I see now. Me, yeah, I'm not a second class citizen. Let the Holy Spirit cuckoo come and tell me to now. Uh, uh, are you kidding me right now? No, that was for her. And it was her personal dealing with God because God had realized that she was getting, people were getting distracted by her tattoo. So for, the best way to cover the tattoo is to wear a turtleneck um, 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 top because only a turtleneck top will be able to cover her neck because she could wear things, other things. It will cover her hands and her other parts of her body but her neck was still showing and when people were seeing those tattoos they were distracted instead of listening to the message they were focused on the tattoos on her body so god gives her an instruction and an idea or a technique for how to um solve that problem and then she takes it and makes it a general thing no it is not it is not that's what is happening to some of us today 
So the way God might want you to build an altar for him today is not the same way he wants you to be an altar tomorrow. The way God will want princess to be an altar for him is not the same way that God wants Mr. Kika Karel to build an altar for him. Maybe he might tell princess that I consider you building me an altar by giving $1,000 to an orphanage. To Mr. Kika Karel, he might say, I desire that you build an altar for me in that you give, um, maybe you give $2,000 to a widow. I, I, I consider you building an altar for me by doing this for this person or by doing that for this church or by doing that for this institution or by doing this. God can tell you anything, but you need to ask him. You need to ask him what he wants you to do. What was uh, um, a man of God said yesterday? Uh, you were so nice, fulfilling purpose. A man of God said yesterday that no matter what you want to do, you would only do what God wants you to do. He would He would make you do what He wants you to do, and He will not let you do above that which He has created you to do. So, for example, what was David's uh, mission? David's mission was to build Jerusalem. But he had finished building Jerusalem and he was so relaxed that he decided that he wanted to build God a temple. It was Solomon's mission to build God a temple. So God says, nada, you ain't going to do it. Moses was to bring the children of Israel out of Egypt. Joshua was to cross them over the Jordan into the promised land. No matter how much Moses pleaded with God, he wasn't going to get past Jordan. He just had to bring the children of Israel. So you need to know what your purpose is and stick to it. And of course, you can only get to God to know what your purpose is. Yeah, I know I've also been one of those people who actually went on with this whole idea of look within you. Of course, I'd also be one person who said that look within you and you're going to see the potentials and you're going to bring them out and you're going to use them. No, it's not looking within you. Mm -mm. It's like me saying that. Um. A remote control needs to know how to use itself so it should look within the remote control. Mm. You're supposed to look at the manufacturer and the manufacturer will tell you how to use the remote control. You cannot look within the remote control to know how to use the remote control. The remote control cannot tell you how you can use it. It's the, man, it's the manufacturer that can tell you better how you can use it. And that's why there's a manual. And our manual is the Bible. So you want to know what God created you for? Go back to God, ask him, study the Bible through the scriptures. You're definitely going to find out. Sometimes your friends might tell you what you were called to do. They might tell you your purpose. It's so God can speak to you in diverse ways. You just have to be connected to God to know when God is speaking to you, to know how he speaks to you. God speaks to me in dreams. He speaks to me through people. He speaks to me through his word. He speaks to me as well sometimes in music. He speaks to me as well sometimes through conversation. I'm having this worry in my mind. I'm having this question I'm asking. And then I'll just be talking with someone. Like the person has no clue that they've even answered a question. So it's me. It has to be me who is sensitive enough to know that this is God speaking. And so the person will just be clueless. The person will just say something and it just clicks. Boom! That is the answer, princess. That is it. The person will never know. But I know. Because I'm sensitive, because I'm looking out, because I'm expectant. That's how it works. So this time around, God tells them that, oh, build me an altar. Altar just with stones. Don't use iron tools on them. And of course, they went ahead and built the altar and then offer burnt offerings there to God. And thou shalt offer peace offerings and shall eat there and rejoice before the Lord. When God does great things to you, rejoice. But even in hard times, rejoice. Because even when things are difficult, God's children are rejoicing. Why? Because the Bible says when they say there's a casting down, we are saying there's a lifting up. Why? Because our economy is not of the earth. It's of the heavens. And of course, our economy doesn't run dry. We don't go bankrupt. COVID doesn't affect our economy. No, 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 no. No pandemic affects our economy. I've never seen an ambassador to a country crying in some country that is going through difficulties because they are not of that country. Their economy, their everything, that they, the way they are being taken care of is the standard with which they are being taken care of in their own country. 
So we can't be suffering here on earth. We're supposed to be living the life. Because in the kingdom where we come from, the kingdom of heaven, they're living the life. But we're only going to experience that kingdom come on earth when we truly call it and we truly live by the precepts and the standards of the word of God. And so it goes in to say, and thou shalt write upon the stones all the words of this law very plainly. It's also important to write plainly and to speak plainly so people can understand. Sometimes a lot of people know all these Bible terminologies and then they're talking to you and blowing some big, big grammar. You're not even hearing and understanding anything. It defies the purpose of communication. Communication, if you want to communicate and communicate right, the receiver is supposed to understand the message and give you feedback. And the feedback will be the way they react to the message. Then you will know that they understood the message the way you desired or not. So when you start blowing big grammar, I'm not even understanding what you're saying. How does it help both of us? It's not helping both of us. It's not terminology. It's preaching the gospel. What did this woman... This woman didn't go to Bible school. The woman at the well. She didn't go to Bible school. Because we've made Christianity, we've made um, preaching the gospel, we've made evangelism look so serious, so difficult, so hard. It's not like that. If not, God would have not said, go into the world and make it disciples of me. He would have not given that mandate to everybody. As a Christian, it is your obligation to preach the gospel. Oh yes, it's not just for the evangelists. The evangelists have a way of doing it, a different dimension of doing it. But you as a child of God is supposed to preach the gospel. Someone say, no, but I'm not going to Bible school. I'm not really studying the Bible that much. The woman at the well, has she studied anything? She didn't have nothing. It was her testimony. How did you get saved? Your salvation testimony can actually win someone over to God. It can actually win someone over to the kingdom. You don't need to know too much Bible. Sometimes God might not even use you, but with Bible, with scriptures. It might just be an act of kindness. There are lots and lots of kinds of acts of kindness in the Bible. They've been talking here about the Levites. They've been talking about the widows. They've been talking about strangers. How do you treat strangers? That's why Jesus said that on the last days, he would say, when I was hungry, you gave me to eat. When I was this, and then the people would ask, like, where do we see you? Say, when you did to the least of this, you did it to me. And then he would say, oh, when I was hungry, you didn't give me to eat. And the people would be like, when did I not do that? Those people you're looking down on. You see someone you're supposed to help. You're supposed to show, you say you're a Christ, you're a Christlet. You say you're a Christ child. And then you see someone suffering, you can't help. You just overlook them. Really? You just don't know whom you're overlooking. It could be Jesus. It could be an angel. Imagine if Abraham was not sensitive. He would not have known and his nephew would have probably died. Sorry, people. Sorry, sorry, sorry. He would have not known and his, his, his nephew would have probably died. But he took it upon himself and then he took care of those uh, messengers, of those angels. And he was in turn taking care of God. There are some people who come to you and cry out for help. Probably God is sending those people to you because he knows you can truly be of help to them. Oh yeah. That's the truth. May God help us in Jesus name. He really helped us. And he says, And thou shalt write upon the stones all the words of this law very plainly. Write it as plainly as possible. Preach as plainly as possible. You don't need some over overrated study of the word to be able to go and tell the next person. You just tell them your testimony and take them to where you went, where you got saved. Say, come and see a man. That was her only message. Come and see a man. Come and see a man. Come and see that man who changed my life forever. Come and see the man who got me from zero to hero. Come and see the man who got me from nothing to something. Come and see the man who got me from nobody to somebody. Come and see the man who turned my life around. Of course, the people around me knew who I was before. And so when they see the brightness and the glory of God shining through my life, they would know that what I'm saying is true. Come and see a man. 
preach the gospel, Lord, it is important. And Moses and the Levites spake unto all Israel, saying, Take heed, hearken, O Israel, this day, that thou become the people of the Lord thy God. Thou shalt, thou shalt therefore obey the voice of the Lord thy God, and do his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day. God is always giving blessings and they have to proceed obedience to his commandments, his statutes and his judgments. Sometimes we pray, we ask God, we call on him and everything and nothing is happening. Why? We're not obeying the commandments. There are principles, there are ways some things happen. If we don't follow the right ways, if we don't follow the principles, the things ain't going to happen to us. They won't happen to us. God doesn't play jambo. If he says that the way you're going to get this is through obedience of commandments, his statutes and his judgments, and you ain't obeying his commandments, statutes and judgments, you ain't going to get nothing, darling. Do not be deceived. Pray as much as you can. Fast as much as you want. Do all the religious activities you want to do. If there are commandments that God has given you and you're not obeying them, things ain't going to happen. Oh, yes. Don't look at other people. Every single person has their personal dealings with God. Find yours. Have your personal relationship with God and let God tell you what to do. Two people are going to do a particular thing. One person is going to be let off the hook. You, God is going to so deal with you. The Bible says to whom much is given, much is required. So you don't expect you whom God has taught a lot. God has given you everything. He has taught you this. They say that I've taught you and taught you and taught you. And by now I'm thinking you're supposed to be taking solid food, but you still want milk. The apostle was shocked. He'd be shocked. It's shocking. Yes. You've been in church since you've given your life to Christ ages ago, but you just don't want to grow. Who want to have a child that the child doesn't grow? You're feeding your child every single day and the child is not growing. Would you be excited? I don't think there's anybody who will like that. But that's how some of us are. That's how some of us are Christians. We don't want to grow. We don't want to grow past. I remember sometime when God dealt with me, I used to use fleeces a lot when I was just born again. What are fleeces? Like you tell God that, okay, if it's God who is telling you this thing, then let it fall. Or you just say some kind of impossible things. But do you know? Do you know God in his infinite mercy was doing those things for us? But do you know even the enemy can use fleeces? Yes. Even the enemies can take advantage of the fleeces that you're desiring and make them happen. And then you think that God is not involved. Meanwhile, God is involved. I remember the last fleece that I did. It didn't work. So I said, okay, it means that that's not what God said. And then after a couple of days, God told me that it's the same thing I said. It's me who said it. But I wasn't going to give you that fleece because I need you to grow up. I need you to get to the place where when I speak, you know my voice and you know this is me speaking and you believe me and you get on. I know sometimes it gets a little bit tricky, it gets a little bit hard and you just want confirmations. But fleeces, they're dangerous, man. Even the devil can pull fleeces out there. And you could miss it thinking it's God. Meanwhile, he's not. So God wants us to have a relationship with him to the extent that we know his voice. And when he speaks once, we can hear, obey instantly, promptly and completely. Not partially. Partial obedience is equal to disobedience. Partial, um, delayed obedience is equal to disobedience. And sometimes we lose out. I've given us the, 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 the example of planting season. So this is planting season. If the Lord is telling you plant now, you don't plant now, you will not harvest when it's harvest season. Maybe you decide to plant two weeks before harvest season. You don't go harvest, my dear. You plant it, but you will not harvest. Because all the rains, all the sunshine, all the things that the plants would have received to grow, the time is past. The time is far spent. So yes, this delayed obedience is equal to disobedience and it has consequences. Partial obedience is equal to disobedience and it has consequences. <clears throat> You'll be like, oh, but Lord, I planted. When did you plant? When did you plant? It's just like how um, um, trading online is, how this forex training is. I, 
I was talking to my colleague and he was saying something like, they always give them a time. It's a time span of like three minutes or two minutes or four minutes. And anything can happen after that four minutes. You could actually lose all your earnings in just the next split second after the four minutes. As well as you could also, if you put it before the four minutes from the time they give you, say, for example, they say it's from 10.30 to 10.32. If you put it at 10.29, you might lose it. If you put it at 10.33, you might lose it. So delayed obedience is equal to disobedience and it has consequences. Partial obedience is equal to disobedience and it's... It has its consequences as well. And so Moses charged the people the same day saying, This shall stand upon Mount Gerizim to bless the people. When he had come over Jordan, Simeon, Levi, okay, there were a group of people out of the 12 tribes of Israel, the children of the, uh, the 12 tribes of Israel. Out of those children, there were a couple of people that were supposed to bless and then a number of people, I think six of them, were supposed to be in Gerizim and they were going to bless. And six of them were going to be in Ebal and they were supposed to curse. Wait, people. Just imagine that one of the people who was supposed to be in the area of blessing decided to go and be with the people to curse. Would they have been fulfilling purpose? No. Would they have been doing something? They, they, there are lots of us today as Christians who are doing too many activities, but we're not doing God's will. We're doing too many activities, not, not simple activities though. activities that are like, it, it looks like we're doing something, but we're doing nothing. Why? Because we're not in the will of God. Reuben was supposed to be in Mount, at Mount Ebal. He was supposed to be among the people to curse. If he decided to go and be at Mount Gerizim with the other people to bless, he will be as useless as useless. Because that's not where he's supposed to be. And of course, he'll be opening his mouth and he'll be able to bless. But he will not get any rewards for, being, for doing some other person's job instead of his job. Oh yes. I've given that example some time ago here where I said, Okay, so um, um, there is Brazeries in Cameroon that produce fizzy drinks. And there is um, Guinness. They produce Malta, right? So you get employed at Brazeries and then you get up every single day and you're going to Guinness, you're working, you're doing a great job. All the employees, all the people at Guinness, they're hailing you, they're congratulating you. And then at the end of the month, Guinness is not going to pay you. They probably were letting you do the job because they think you're volunteering. And then do you think you're going to go to Brazeries now and go and tell them to pay you? When you didn't work for them, you did a great job, excellent job. You actually pushed Guinness to go to the next level, but you had the wrong place. So in the end, you won't get paid. You did work, excellent work for that matter, but you're not going to get paid. Because at Brazeries, you're absent. That's how we are. That's how some of us are, children of God. We're in the places where God doesn't want us to be there. And we're doing excellent work and every other person is hailing us. But in the, in the book of God's fulfillment of purpose for your life, you're zero. You ain't doing nothing. You're absent. So let's snap out of it. Let's wake up. Let's go back to God and ask, us where, and ask him where he wants us to be. I would rather wait in the presence of God for two years and hear him tell me this is what I want you to do. And trust me when you know what you have to do. Overtaking is very possible. God could make you do in two hours what you should have done for five years. As opposed to someone who is there for five years, ten years, doing and doing and not doing what God wants them to do. Let's not be in a rush. Let's wait in the presence of God and let God tell you what he wants you to do. Don't be in a hurry. You're in no competition with anybody. Your race is for you. And so you should be focused on God, teaching you and telling you how to run the race. Sometimes people might deceive you. 
It is God who can tell you why he created you. It is God who can tell you what he needs you to be doing. It's God who can tell you where he wants you to be at a particular time. Get a relationship with God. Ask God. He will tell you. You think he wants you to be messing up? You think he wants you not to fulfill purpose? No, that's not the God I serve. He wants you to fulfill purpose, but you need to come and ask him. He says you've not received because you've not asked. Have you asked? No, you've not. No, you've not. No, you've not. So these people had to be on this side. You have to be where God wants you to be to be able to function properly and effortlessly. And of course, get the rewards. Say God is a very good rewarder. He rewards those who diligently seek him and are called according to his purpose. He is a rewarder. He gives people their deserving wages. God is not a shrewd master. He gives people their deserving wages. Are you deserving of your wages? Are you in the place where God called you to be? Or you're in a place where you feel like, well, it's popular. Everybody's here. People that are here are making it. Is that where God wants you to be? Or is it where you think because people are making it so you should also be there? Not funny. It says and Le- and the Levites shall speak and say unto all the men of Israel with a loud voice, Cursed be the man that make a graven image. The Lord has told us, Do not make of any image, any molten image, do not bow to it, do not serve it. See me, I'm unapologetic about this thing. So some of us will say, No, we're doing this, we're not we're honoring, we're not worshipping. Which one is which one? God said, No make and serve. He has said, Don't even make it. Before talking about whether you're honoring it or you're worshipping it. No make up. No make up. <laughs> uh, the work of the hands of the craftsman and put it in secret place. All the people shall say amen. You don't need to make it. That set a, cursed be he that set a light by his father or his mother. And all the people shall say Amen. <laughs> Let's be looking at these things and taking them seriously. Cursed be the man that removed his neighbor's landmark. You're in trouble. Cursed be the man that um, maketh the blind to wander out of the way. The Bible also said, not even only the blind, the Bible says that you who makes this little one to fall, it were better, a millstone is tied around your neck and you're dropped in water. God doesn't even want them to find your cups. So that's why that millstone should be hung on your neck. So that when you die, you go underwater and remain underwater. It is that bad. Let's be careful. Let's be very careful. Cursed be he that perverted the judgment of the stranger, the fatherless, the widow. Mm. Some of you, you stand for false weakness. Some of you, you pervert judgment. You want to help some particular people because you know what you gain from them. And so you pervert judgment. A poor person or a widow or a stranger or an orphan is there and they duly have to be helped. And they duly have to get what they deserve. But you pervert it. You pervert it because you want to favor some other person that you probably get some benefits from. Oh, this poor person cannot give you anything. Hmm. Curses will come upon you. Some of us, some of the things that are happening in our lives or in the lives of our children, we're thinking is village people. It's not village people. You got the curse upon yourself by the things you've done. Perverting judgment. Standing as a false witness. Lying with your father's wife. Huh. Lying, lying with animals. Some people, I don't know. They call it whether it's bestiality or is what to lying with animals. I don't understand. Bible says lying with your sister, the daughter of your father. It's it's an abomination. Incest. See, yeah. When God says this thing, 
we're seeing the kinds of things that are happening in our generation some kinds of things are happening and we're wondering it's because of all this craziness that we're doing the bible has already said here that curses follow the people who do these kinds of things and we see brothers and sisters doing all kinds of nonsense and they are making it to look like it's supposed to be normal and then you who is doing the normal thing they are making you feel like you're abnormal see how unapologetically be abnormal for god look me fine with all the amazing guys that are here on planet earth they want to see me i'm telling myself that i'm in love with another girl i said how how is that even possible how is that even possible i i, I should be sick and when i'm sick i need help i need mental care i know my rights no that's how i grew up i grew up loving girls really I beg, I beg, I beg. I mean, I don't even want to get provoked. And then we're wondering why things are just going upside down for us. We're wondering why our life cannot function properly. The curses will follow us. They had already been decreed. They had already been released. So when you get into that action, those things start following you. And then you come out and go now to Baba or go to this place. And then you're making pastors to be praying on your head for ever and ever. Meanwhile, you know what you need to stop doing. You know what you need not to be doing. So that that thing should end. You don't want to stop it. You're just wasting pastor's prayers. For nothing. There are some things that we know. We know that we're doing. Those are the things that are bringing all these troubles that are happening in our lives. And we know. The only way for these things to stop is to stop doing those things. But we don't want to stop doing those things. But we expect that the curses will disappear. They won't disappear, my dear. We cannot hide it. Curses, he that lied with his mother, mother-in-law. Hey. Ah, our generation, eh? God help us. Curse be that take a reward to slay an innocent person. There are lots of people... They have taken rewards to blackmail. When they say slay, it doesn't mean only killing the person physically, even though there's also the one of killing the person physically. When you go and blackmail people, when you tarnish people's images, when you lie about people, when... some people can lie. Hey! They can lie here, eh? You... <laughs> some people keep a straight face and lie in front of you. You'll be shocked to your inner bones. <laughs> Anyways, those who take rewards for for lying about an innocent person, to kill an innocent person, you, you'll be in trouble. Cursed be he that confirmed not all the words of this Lord to do them. All the people shall say amen. The Lord has statutes. He has guidelines. He has principles. We need to follow them. If you don't follow them, you get the consequences. If you don't obey his laws, you're going to get into trouble. And all these laws are not put there for God. They're put there for you. It's for your good. You follow them, you don't follow them. Oh, God is still God. God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. It's not your things that you do or don't do that make God more God or less God. God is God. With you doing what he wants you to do or not doing it, he is God. It's not like when you do the things he wants you to do, it makes him more God. Then when you don't do the things he wants you to do, it makes him less God. Lie, lie, oh. Ra, ra, oh. Ra, ra. It is for your good. All the things that God tells you to do or not do is for your good. So you're doing yourself good when you do the things that he says you should do and you run away like a plague from the things that he says you should not do. Mr. Kika Carissa, oftentimes, these instructions have an unknown health benefit to us. I'm telling you. For example, if you have sexual intercourse with a very close relative, the offspring often presents with horrible defects and the species usually is not very healthy. That's true. That's true. I don't know why we don't see it. I don't know why we don't believe it. I think even science have ended up saying that thing. Science have ended up confirming it. It's in the Bible. There's nothing new under the sun. The Bible tells us about it. So let's just even look at the, the logical aspect of this thing. 
why do some relationships have issues when it comes to sexual intercourse for some people the lady or the guy is saying you're not doing it right you're not doing it right how do they know you're not doing it right because they had an experience with some other person so there is comparison between you and that person poor you if you've never done it with some other person before as well but now that is going to save you the wahala because you all are starting from scratch so if there's something you're not enjoying you all are going to be learning is not based on comparison of another person this person is not that person you can't be comparing both of them you don't like people to compare you with another person so you can't be comparing another person with another person do unto others what you want them to do to you but when you've had all these escapades with all these several men like a woman or all these several women like a man you now start wanting your wife to be like one of those women she cannot she cannot be like one of those women so it would have saved you the simple wahala by marriage is honorable and the bed on defy obey her. it will help you no we don't want to hear you are having soul ties with all kinds of people this man had probably slept with some other women okay and he has collected their curses their implications their entanglements and he sleeps with you you're not just taking his own entanglements and stuff it's so tired you're taking the ones he has collected from the other women and you're taking the ones she has collected from the other men see if we begin to see the the implications of these things eh? first fear will frighten us not to do it before even understanding that eh, god is telling us not to do those things because he loves us and he wants the best for us it is for your good people when god tells you not to do a thing don't do it it's for your good when he tells you to do something do it and do it with all of you because it is for your good i don't know about you but every single day i pray and i ask god that lord help me help me to obey you totally and completely help me to obey you promptly and mr kika Carell say practically and scientifically Pork meat is one of the most difficult meals for our system to digest. This usually overstrains our digestive system and causes gastrointestinal tract cancers. Can you imagine that? Hmm. I mean, who likes pork? God help me. Help me to be, to be, um, how do they call it? To be temperate. You know, Bible says, we should be temperate. We should not be overly righteous. So we have to do everything in moderation. Oh, that's the word. Moderation. Sometimes I eat pork so much. Oh my God. Now this one has just freaked me out. I didn't know. So people, please go to God and ask God what he's telling you and obey it. All these things have. And most of the times when God says, we've seen in some of these commandments, like at the end, it says it will lengthen your days. And it's really true. Because these things truly lengthen your days. They truly lengthen your days. When you obey those things that God says you should do, you know, they begin to say about doing some little exercises, eat this, don't eat at this time of the day, don't do this, be able to sleep well. And oh my God, I'm guilty of some of them, my dear. Trust me, I'm so, so guilty. Lord, help me. I'm crying out to God to help me every single day. But I need to put in my best. I need to put in effort as well to make sure that it happens. Your medical practitioner is here telling you it's true. Science is proving it. Practically, it's proven. It takes a very long time for pork to digest. It is true. This is not the first time I'm hearing that. I've heard that time without number so they advise you on not eating it so much they advise you on not eating it at some particular times of the day they advise you they give you all these things it's for your good my dear it's for your good it's not like these people hate you and they don't want you to get what you want to get they love you and they want you to be your best god loves you too and he wants you to be your best so people that has been it for today on a chapter a day. I'm really grateful that you're here today. 
Thank you so much, Mr. Kike Carell, uh, medical personnel in the building. Thank you for all the information you've given us today. I'm sure someone seeing this today will be able to get responsible, especially me, who has just seen it now, be able to get responsible and um, take care of myself and my well-being and my health because it's important. If this body is not there to carry the body, the spirit and the soul, we're not going to be here on earth. So we need this body. The Bible even says it. I wish that you prosper and be in good health. Even as your soul prospers. Because your soul is going to prosper and be able to do things here on earth when you are in good health. If this body is not functioning well, the soul ain't going to be here. It's going to go. Heaven or hell. One of those places. Where would you spend eternity? You need to think about it. And of course, to spend eternity with God in heaven, you need to follow what the Bible says. And you need to have a connection with God and follow what he tells you. That's how we do it. I always get to say I love you so very much, but God loves you way, way more. Get to like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you get all our updates each time we upload a new video or we get to go live. I always get to say, Lord, engraft this word on the fleshly tables of our heart so that we're going to leave thereby. And let people see your good works in our lives and glorify our Father who is in heaven. And let them see us and say, of oh, the truth, this ones have been with God and desire to get to know you. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Cause us to be doers of your word, not hearers only, so that the blessings are going to come by. Thank you for an amazing time spending your presence today through studying the word on the chapter a day. So thank you for grace. Pray, oh God, that you're going to bless those who are just going to church today. You're going to minister to them in a special way. For those who are halfway their day, Father, I pray that you're going to empower them and bless them as well in a very special way. Let the rest of their day be beautiful. And for those of us who are getting ready to sleep, Lord, I pray that you're going to give us sound sleep and sweet dreams to the glory of your name. And by your grace, we'll wake up tomorrow strong and kick into carrying on with the rest of the day's activities. Cause us to be able to go and conquer the world in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, people. It has been another great time with you on a chapter today. Let's get set tomorrow. It's going to be Deuteronomy chapter 28. Read ahead of time and let's come back here and have a swell time together. Tomorrow, I think a chapter a day is going to be later because we go live on YouTube at 9.30 and we finish at 10.30. So a chapter a day comes up at 10.30 instead of 9.30. So um, that's a new routine. But um, not every Monday. So I'm not even sure about this Monday tomorrow. But um, some Mondays, some Mondays, we're going to be live on YouTube first. And then we'll come back on the chapter a day. We're going to be live for one hour on YouTube. And then we'll come for a chapter a day. Some days, depending on... How the day goes and how busy it is, we just might have a chapter right there before we go live on YouTube. Just be on the lookout though. I'll probably be putting on um, a message on my wall to say if that's going to happen. If we're going to have a chapter right there later or earlier. Much love to everyone. Until tomorrow. Ciao, ciao.